the one I keep running into, and I, I look at five to 600 fields every year. And when we're looking at those fields across Western Canada and in the US, I'm amazed at how many mechanical errors we have out there. And not just mechanical errors, but herbicide errors. Following a group two with uh, canola, it's not very good. But what we see so often when we go and start digging up is fertilizer directly with the seed and enough fertilizer that it's going to reduce the number of seeds making plants, a very high percent of difference. And just to show you what impact that has, this is with a very narrow double disc press drill, and you can see that, okay, under drier conditions, that green line, here's the red line, five pounds of N. Uh, you've already got a bit of a drop. But at 10 pounds of N, we're down to 40% of the seed making plants. So it's going to have a dramatic impact. But look at the days to emerge. It goes up dramatically to that 20 days just sitting there. I had a neighbor once. I drove to work every day past this field. And it wasn't coming up. I know we see the canola in it. And it rained 23 days after it was seeded all of a sudden it all came up. That, there was an, I asked him what happened, he said, well, my damn son, he was seeding barley across the road and he didn't change the fertilizer rate with the seed. So he had 70 pounds of N in there, it was slightly on the dry side, and it took until that rain, it sat there. It was protected by the fertilizer, it didn't absorb enough water to even start the germination process. And when it rained, it all came up. He had a very, very nice stem, but it was also a uh, huge delay in maturity. And here's what we see. That's 30 pounds of N with, with the seed. Just 30 pounds. You can see we've got a lot of open spaces in there. And it makes a big difference on, on the yield capability. Reduced leaf area index. This is uh, using ASN. A slow release nitrogen, and look at the difference in plant staff. That's what we have to achieve, is that uniformity in plant density. And it depends on your soil texture. We can go much higher rates when we've got that higher seedbed utilization on a heavier textured soil rather than a sandy loam. Look at what happens here. We start seeing a 30% seedbed utilization, you're under 20 pounds of N as a max. And uh, this happened to be a study uh, Elson Solberg did with Alberta Ag. Uh, there's fair soil moisture <laughs> and only 40% emergence uh, with 10% seedbed utilization. But look what happened when he went up to a 50% seedbed utilization. Not, not a lot of difference between them. Um, and that's very high levels of N going on. That was a heavier texture uh, soil. This is P. Everyone says phosphorus is nice and benign with the seed. Well, there's 20 pounds. Look what it's done. You know, that's good soil moisture. We've seen a real dramatic drop in germination and emergence. And we've seen a huge increase in days to emerge. Just the salt effect of that fertilizer with the seed is going to uh, slow down the germination process. Uh, root proliferation. Canola actually does have a massive amount of roots. You don't think so when you yank it up and there's that stuff there. But uh, it's got uh, greater proliferation versus, say, wheat or flax. Flax has got one stem. Uh, it doesn't produce secondaries. Uh, but look at that. If you've ever seen a root, an olive root, <laughs> that's root hairs are really what function the best to pull in your nutrients and uh, make the plant grow real good. I'm going to skip that. This is old research work, but what it showed me was, and this, uh, it's ongoing. We know that if we use this one right here, where we're putting uh, the nitrogen and two-thirds of the phosphorus in a sideband. And one, one third uh, phosphorus in the seed roll. We're going to get a pop-up effect, especially if we're going early. 
because phosphorus under cold, uh, even good wet conditions is not readily available. So if you've got to have a bit of phosphorus with the seed to give you a pop-up effect. And phosphorus is critical in that early growth stage, getting germination and emergence. Uh, so I'm, I'm still, this is some of the work that John Rackett did with uh, Wesco. And again, just show, looking at, here's no phosphorus, starter effect with it. Uh, energy broadcast, and here's our energy in the band. And we see a, a significant difference. Potassium I have to watch. I don't know how much potassium you guys use up here. It, you tend to be on the low side, don't you, Cabal? Yeah. We start seeing a difference. Usually if we're down to about 250 parts per million, we'll probably get a, a response 30, 40% of the time. But it has a higher salt index. So if you've got a very narrow seed type utilization, you don't want to exceed that 15 pound. But if you're mixing it in a blend with N and P, then you've got to be really careful because you're going to reduce stand establishment. I see lots and lots of fields. This one I'm actually taken not too far from Polaire in, uh, in June. And you see that big, huge zone of literally no canola. What was it? Cutworms. Cutworms. It was a major issue on a lot of fields this past year. And we see a lot of this. You start looking at it and you say, oh boy, that's uh, brown girdly root rot. No, it's cutworms. You can see the chewing damage that those worms are doing on that plant. That plant will never make anything. It will not produce anything. Because it's destroyed its capability of moving nutrients up and down in the plant. And there's the beast. <laughs> uh, Alternaria. Uh, we used to say, well, it was only an issue in Polish. Well, no. We've got some really good research data that shows that it's uh, going to really reduce germination and emergence on infected seed lots. Uh, how many people do a disease test on their seed lots? It's not required. So I, I would like to see them put in a test for uh, diseases on their seed lots. Uh, Yayan Evans, our pathologist, uh, he did a trial one year with Argentine varieties and found a 12 bushel difference in yield where he was using a fungicide on his canola. And of course it's going to increase green seed. And of course all of our yield loss comes from this. What that disease does, it's infecting seeds underneath. So if you open up a pod, you'll see a gray film on the pod, on the seed itself. That's an infected <coughs> seed. But what happens is that pod starts to dry down, and it torques differently because of all the disease on it, and it shatters. So all of our yield loss in molten area comes from shatter loss. Uh, that's, that's just an example of some of the seed lots that we had tested on how much Altenaria we have. This is Saskatchewan. They got a different type of Altenaria than we do in Alberta. <laughs> We've got Altenaria brassicae. And it can cause us a lot of grief. I didn't see a lot of Altenaria up here in the fall. I was up uh, walking fields through the Polar area in the end of August. Uh, a lot of it was swath. And it was pretty clean from that standpoint. Uh, we run into this pretty frequently. <laughs> That's herbicide damage on seedlings. It was because the guy went in and sprayed his field with 2,4-D before he seeded. And there's enough 2,4-D in there to, that it's going to affect the growth of the plant. Uh, here's a classic case. If you look closely, you'll see all of these are showing symptoms of a group 2. Carryover. Uh, Stuart Brand with Ag Canada at Scott, Saskatchewan has done some really interesting research work on group two carryover. Uh, he'd measure how much group two went on the year before, then grow canola in it and see what it did. It reduced the leap area index by as much as 30% in the spring. And that's a direct correlation with yield. A direct correlation. If you don't have that manufacturing base, 
you're going to have some real problems on yield. <coughs> How's that? <laughs> That's pretty ugly, isn't it? And that was uh, canola growing on what kind of land? Pulses. Pulses. And what did they use for pulses? Field seeds. Odyssey or Pursuit. And that's exactly what it did. It just thinned it right out. And you can see there is no leaf surface area there. It literally jumped that vegetative stage where we need to get those big leaves. And I would say that uh, I, when I walk fields, out of 10% of the fields that I walk have a group two problem in them. Some of it's not observable. They look normal. There's no distortion of growth until you go into the next field right beside it that didn't have any carryover, seeded the same day, and you've got twice the amount of leaf surface area. So it, it's uh, something to consider in your rotations. It's not just the crops you're rotating, it's the herbicide that you're rotating. And we, we really need to look at that. That's what group two looks like when it comes out of a, out of a heavily uh, infected soil, or with group two. There's no main anthropomere stem. That's the main stem. It's lost. So it's sending up secondaries. Yes, it'll produce, but it will never have the leaf area index that it needs to have high yield. And of course you get frost. And I, oh, I get calls every year on this. Do I receive? That's the day after the frost. Everything black. I say, well, no, wait five days and see if you've got any uh, regrowth. You can lose 50% of the plants. Remember how flexible canola is. You can lose 50% of the plants or more uh, from a frost and still have very close to the same yield. And it means how uniform. Uh, did you have low areas where it was 100%? Unfortunately, uh, that can happen too. Those plants, start showing a new leaf. Yes, it's delayed maturity, but that plant still has a major capacity of performance. <coughs> and I used to use, and I still do, I will make a W across the field. Every 20 faces, I'll do a square foot count and pull up all the plants, because I want to know how many healthy plants I've got there. And if I, on a herbicide tolerant variety, Roundup Ready, Liberty Link, Clearfield, if I've got two plants left, healthy, per square foot, I'm on 60% of the field, none in the other 40%, I'm still going to recommend you leave it, rather than reseed it, because you've lost already two to three weeks of growth. And that yield capability is still pretty darn good. It's not going to give you the real high yields, but it's going to give a reasonable yield at that level of, of plant numbers. Um, we get it right through into early June, <laughs> where you get the whole plant turning colors, and again, that plant will recover. But it has lost a huge amount of its leaf area index. It's, it's going to impact on yield uh, quite severely. We get crusty. Uh, fortunately, a lot of you have gone to zero till. We rarely see that happen anymore because of the extra residue on the soil surface. We don't get the levels of crusting we used to get. This is on a real bad gray wooded soil, and it really impacted the amount of plants that came up, because they can't push through a big crust. The worst crust I have ever saw in the piece was out uh, straight west of here, and I had a spade with me, and I couldn't even get in the ground. We had a crust that deep, and the plants are stranded in the crust. Is it going to live? Not a hope, not a chance. Even the barley was that bad. 